Advice from our grandparents that went through the Depression. What were some of the things that they did to survive then? You know, they really weren't expecting that. It hit pretty fast from different things that they've said. They weren't really expecting it, but the thing was, the ones that really made it were ones that were already living um, close to the close to the earth, so to speak. Um, people that lived out in the country that already was canning and had animals and gardening and maybe a lot of them didn't even have electricity anyway, so they had lamps and, you know, different things. And even they had to adapt. And folks, I'm afraid we're going to be going through that too, and we're going to have to adapt. My mama went through the depression. She was a little girl, but she's told me a few things. And I was very close to my grandparents, and my one grandma especially told me quite a bit about the depression. Um, she was a quilter, and she saved every scrap of material, little pieces she saved. And she made all kinds of quilts. Now, this is an old one. This is actually not from my grandma. This is from a great aunt. But, and this quilt is fairly old, because I'm fairly old. <laughs> but, you know, it's getting kind of worn now, and I've thought about finding some other material and trying to repair that. I already had to repair the sides because it it was kind of came apart. So I bought a good solid sheet and put the blanket on it. It was a sheet, I mean, put... Yeah, I put the, the quilt on it, not the blanket, and then sewed the, them together. So, I know a little bit about quilting. I've done some quilting. But um, this one here is known as a tie quilt. But that's one thing, is saving stuff. Just saving every bit of scraps that you have. And start learning how to piece them together. You may have to make some quilts. Even if you don't have like a quilting frame and all that where they do the actual sewing. Let me see if I can find a quilt to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now this is was done a great deal of it on the quilting rack. And do you see all the little crisscross she actually quilted through here? And if I opened it up, you would see more of the quilting design that she did. But... This is not a tie quilt. This is an actual quilted quilt. Whereas this one, she didn't, they didn't have to have a quilting frame. I've made, um, quilts where you just sew the pieces of material together and then you tie it to the bottom material, bottom part after, you know, when you sew through and then you cut those and, t and then you tie this one and this one together, the opposite ones, and it ties it together. That's a lot quicker and easier, believe me. <laughs> but yeah, I just, these are beautiful though, the quilted quilts. This is an old one. I've been keeping it in here. I used to have a lot of these hanging on my wall. I don't have anywhere to hang them where I live right now, but they're so precious to me. So I keep them, I just pull this out to show you. I keep them zipped up in this plastic thing to keep the dust and dirt so I don't have to you know, wash them, they're getting really, really old. They're just very precious to me because my grandma quilted them and put hours of work in them. But look at all these little pieces of material. She would save every little piece of material. That way she could sew it in and make... This are, these are old pieces. Some of this material is probably... I don't know if she has any from the 30s, but... She probably has materials from maybe the 40s and probably 50s. I know 60s um, and 70s. But, yeah, she saved all the materials. She even made Grandpa's shirts. But they saved everything. It's slowing down now. This whole thing was shifting side to side. Maybe you can tell. It's it's really wild. The wind is really bad. I would like to talk to you out in the garden. I just don't know if you could hear it. Okay. I don't know. Hopefully. We'll see what happens. Um, 
I was thinking about some of the things that Grandma had said. I know I forgot a lot of things, but one thing, she had skills that a lot of us have forgotten. I can remember watching her, one of my uncles, she no longer lived out in the country when I was a girl, but not really. And one of my uncles, I guess, probably uh, brought her a big hog's head. I remember it sitting on her kitchen counter, and uh, she had the brains and the eyeballs and all kinds of stuff inside the head, and she was mixing it around. I know that sounds gross, but that's what they used to do. She made something called head cheese, and I was just so grossed out, I didn't even want to try it. But, you know, I do remember some stuff like that because it was almost traumatic to me. I live in a different world. I was growing up in a different world. That was just normal stuff to them. So I'm hoping that you can hear me and my camera doesn't go flying. Um, I better check this out and make sure it's not too windy that you can't hear. Well, I started to come in the house and it kind of calms down. So now I'm over in a different area on my way back to the house. But, um, <laughs> We'll see. Just calm down a little bit, but I'm close. It's crazy and wild. It'll get quiet for a minute, and then it'll just come up and just blow like a hurricane almost, and then calm back down. And, no, I don't want to play catch right now. And, uh, okay, so let me see if I can think about what I was saying. Grandma. Okay. Yeah, I know that there's a lot of things I've forgot. Um, she did it, her cooking from scratch a lot. Um, like her chicken and dumplings. Oh, I love her chicken. I'll never forget those chicken and dumplings. <laughs> but, yeah, we're going to have to learn to do things from scratch. And gone are the days, well, unless you're using up things you've stocked up of canned foods and stuff like that. But eventually, if you have flour or anything like that, um, we're not going to be able to go on specialized diets. So we're going to be thankful for anything we can get to put in our mouth and fill our bellies. So you need to think about that. Now, some people, I don't know, they may say, well, I have to be on this diet or whatever. You need to try to figure out something about that because it's, guys, I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows the future, but we do know things can only go for so long and all of our supplies have been, have been and are continuing to be cut off. And it started long before this war, so don't let them give you that garbage that that's the reason for it. Um, they're filling us with a lot of misinformation. So, um, and they say the people that are giving good information are the ones giving misinformation. At least some of them they say. And uh, there is a lot of misinformation out there. But there's a lot of good information they call misinformation. I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> listen to that one twice to understand what I just said, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I know it's a TV show, and while we still have electricity, there was an old show in the 70s. Matter of fact, it's probably one of my very favorites. I'm not a big TV buff fan or anything, but I used to watch a series, and I have it. I bought the CDs of it, so... Um, it was called Walton's Mountains, Walton's Mountain, and it was about a family taken after a real family from Spencer's Mountain, but um, that went through the Depression and some of the things that they went through. And of course, they make up stories to go with it, but you can uh, kind of look at some of the things that they're doing and get an idea. In our day and age, especially the younger people coming up, they have no idea about things and how it can be. You may like to watch a lot of sci-fi or fast-moving, fast-car movies and stuff like that, but I would really suggest you try to look up the Walton's Mountains and look and see, especially for those of you that have no first-hand knowledge, no relatives you've really talked about or seen with that. A lot of young people in their 20s and 30s might fall into this category. But look up Walton's Mountain and look at how it was for a family. And, I, and they actually were better off than a lot of families during that time. Um, and what we're about to experience may end up being a lot worse than what they did because so many people don't know the old 
ways, myself included, and I know the old ways, a lot of them. I can remember when I was in my, oh, it's probably about 20, 19, 20, 21. I'd been raised with canning and some canning food and stuff like that, and I was canning, making jams and jellies, and this one guy I was dating, he says, uh, I remember how old I was, because I was still dating then. I was pretty young, but up there a little ways. Um, he says, you know how to can? You know how to can food? Wow, that's cool. I don't think there's very many people that can. And back then, there wasn't very many. It's just, I was kind of, I was raised, my mom is from the Ozarks in Arkansas. And uh, my dad was from Texas. So, uh, a lot of the old ways were handed down to me. Especially my family, because they're a very old-fashioned family. And even at that, there's so much that I don't know that they knew firsthand during the Depression. So I would suggest that, um, and that's funny that I'm even saying that because I'm not a big TV fan, but of TV itself, there are some things that I like. But the reason I say that is at least it can kind of get you, give you a foundation basis to get your ideas, your mind going, and maybe you can go from there, so like springboard from that into other things that you will need to do or think about doing and getting prepared right now while we have time. It may be a matter of weeks. It may be a couple months. I've heard 89 days or 86 days, and that was on the 6th. As of like around July 1st, there's supposed to be a big change. Uh, it's A lot's going to happen in June. And then July 1st, when everybody goes to get their food for the July 4th celebrations and other stuff, they're going to be shocked and people might panic. It's what I've I, I don't know about all of that. I haven't totally researched that time frame and what's supposed to happen, but that's what I've heard. Um, I just hope you share this video with others. If you don't want to share my video, fine, at least the information on it. Um, because we need to start thinking and preparing. We don't have a lot of time to I don't believe we're already seeing prices starting to go way up. Um, I think well, they're just things I want to say and I can't. But anyway, um, that's a few things that I wanted to say to you. I gotta check the sound on this with this wind. Hi. Okay. I came inside because it's just getting too wild out there. <laughs> But anyway, let me go over just a few more things, and I'll try not to keep you too long on this. There's just so many things to talk about. Um, one thing you might think about is things to drink. You won't be able to just go down and buy a soda or this or that, probably. So, And you also won't be able to keep buying vitamins and different things like that eventually, probably. And what few you might be able to, you might want to spend your money on something else because your money is not going to go as far. So there is uh, so many drinks that you can make out of herbs that really taste good, like lemon balm. You can soak some fresh lemon balm, just put it in water and let it set. And you can't believe how good that makes a nice, put some ice in it if we have ice and drink it. Just tastes really, really good. Um, and even with um, things that bolster you up so that you feel better and don't get as many of the little things that might be flying around in the air if you catch my drift. Uh, things like olive leaves are very, very um, good. And other stuff. It all takes right now is the time to look into it. I have several things on my videos. I have hundreds of videos on here. So <laughs> I guess I like to talk a lot and make videos. <laughs> but I've been on here a while. Anyway, um, yeah, you can make your own. I, you know, mom, a lot was forgotten years and years ago, like in the 1800s and stuff. They knew a lot of the plants around them and what to use for what. But a lot of that was forgotten. Or it might have been a time of year they didn't have access to a lot of the plants. But how mom knew this, I don't know. It must have been something her mom did. But I think I may have told this on some other videos. But I'll mention it again. Um, you know, there's a thing called ringworm. Sometimes you get it off of some stray cats or different things like that. Well, I would get it sometimes because I always was petting animals and 
I love my critters and other critters around me. So um, mom would take just some newspaper or something and burn it. And the little yellow stuff, which I believe now, thinking on it, it was probably the sulfur. And she would take that, get it on a swab or something, and put it on it. And it killed the ringworms. I never went to the doctor for ringworms. Um, we're going to have to learn to quit just running to the doctor all the time, too. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Glenn Beck, but I watched one of his programs the other day, and he talked about um, when this really hits hard, and it could be at any time, you won't be able to move. So if we want to, if we're planning on moving in another state or this or that, better do it now, but it might be rather difficult even now. Um, yeah, I think we're pretty much going to be locked in wherever we're at. So it's just something to think about. That, and a lot of us are just going to have to make do with where we're at and pray and ask um, for God's grace to get through all this. God's not just going to change things. Um, I believe that Jesus is going to return someday, but I don't believe he's going to rapture us out early and there'll still be a second chance to get saved and all that stuff that they talk about. When you really research that, that is not something that the early church believed. And um, why should we, we're no, matter of fact, we're not near as good as those people. They were awesome Christians back in the old days and they went through some horrible, awful things. So we're no better than they are. We're going to have to go through things too. We live in a sin-cursed world and we're going to have to deal with it. But he does say he will be with us and give us the grace to get through it. So, yeah. Um, okay. So just something to think about there. Um, another thing I was thinking about is we need to start cutting back on things like grains, our breads, and pastas and all of that. And you say, why? Why don't we just enjoy it while we have it? Well, you need to cut back because all of a sudden, if you just quit that, your body like goes through withdrawals and you feel shaky and weak and this and that. But if you start gradually cutting it down and don't fall back into the old patterns and start eating it again, it, you have to stick with it. But then when the time comes, because it's already, we know it's going to be hard to get a hold of grains and stuff. So you might be preparing your body for that. Speaking of grains, we need to think of alternative re sources to feed our animals because we may not have the grains to feed them. Maybe we can find certain grasses that have the grain on top or different things that we can feed. They can't just live on grass. They need other stuff too. They need high protein. Um, we need to think about other sources and that's a whole video within itself, but something to have in the back of your mind and to research. Uh, other ways to feed our animals. Um, Things, a lot of people say, well, if I can just get through this time, I'll just go ahead and eat my grains and stuff that I've saved. And once we get through this, everything will go back to normal and it'll be okay. I don't think things are going to go back to normal. I'm not really sure what it's going to go to, but it's not going to go back to normal the way it was. Um, but we can make a difference as individuals if we learn how to go back to some of the old ways and doing things like um, bartering, which they say you're supposed to pay taxes on now, by the way. But get around other people that you know and trust that you can, and family and diff or whoever, and um, they maybe can grow one thing and maybe you can grow something else and then you can combine it. You know, we did that when I was a kid. We had some good friends down the road and they raised beef. We raised hogs and chickens, and we would all get together and have big dinners. They would bring beef, and we would have, you know, whatever, sausage or pork chops or whatever, or chicken. And, you know, we combined our resources because they had a, several kids, and then there was three of us kids and my mom and dad. And we all just combined all of our resources and had a much more varied uh, meal. So... You need to uh, build up some relationships of people you can trust because you might want to end up doing things like that. Somebody else might have resources you just don't have. We didn't have any pasture where we were at to raise any cattle, um, but they did. So you see, we could get, sometimes we got milk from them and things like that. And then we had other things that they didn't have. So 
they weren't real far away from us, but they were a little ways. What I'm saying where is it could be worse this time. We may, may not be able to get a hold of gasoline, but I guess, I don't know, it's going to be really hard if somebody had horses and could train them to pull a cart. There's actually, there's a family down the road, a few roads over, and they come down our road because they have family on this road. And they have a little cart and a pony that pulls it. And they all ride in that little cart. That little pony is strong. And he just goes to prance and buy in that cute little cart. And they're having such a good time. <laughs> so there are some people that have that knowledge. They got that um, paraphernalia to put on the horse somewhere. So we need to start, maybe start looking and thinking about stuff like that. I know this sounds crazy, but we're living in a crazy world and things are just, they're not going to go back to the way they were. I don't know how much is totally going to be taken from us, but I know in the state of California, they said there will be no gas vehicles. What was it? 2030? It's not very far away. 2030 or 2035. It, they will not be allowed anymore. So, and you say, well, maybe electronic vehicles, but you can't tr go that far in an electronic car. They say, well, they'll put up the charging stations, but that's a lot of infrastructure we just don't have right now. And I don't know if we'll have the materials to build things like that. So just a lot of things to be thinking, but get your mind and gear along these ways and what you can do while you have time to prepare. Um, can't think of anything else right now. And I don't want this video to get too long. But I hope that you enjoyed this information, that it got you to thinking. Maybe you picked up something here. Um, but I'm just, you know, I wanted to share with you some ideas that were in my, my mind. I feel really blessed because, well, I'm getting up in years, but I was raised with people that went through the Depression. I was raised with people from back in the hills. And I was raised in the hills part of my life. So, and even when I, even when we moved to town on the, in the suburbs, we had, oh goodness, we had rabbits in the backyard, we had a garden, we had a grape arbor, um, and it was just a small thing, but we, and we had nut trees and fruit trees, <laughs> um, we made do with what we had, it was much smaller there than where I'm living now. So, but we still, every little bit we had, and we still had some areas of grass, not a whole lot, but we did. Um, but yeah, I was, I'm just very blessed to be used to that kind of a lifestyle somewhat. Some people are used to nothing but electronics and fast food and this totally different, they're going to be so lost when it, when everything totally hits and a lot of it is already starting to hit that they're going to, well, like in the Depression, a lot of people jumped out of windows and stuff like that because they just didn't know how to handle it all. And I am so afraid we're going to see stuff like that. Um, I hope not. I hope people start getting prepared. Are you a survivor? Are you a survivor? Come on, get your mind going. Be a survivor. And one way to, one place you can find strength is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you all next time. Bye now.